In last Friday's video, I told you this one would include all the Coachella stuff, but I didn't think it would be like this. Of course, this past weekend was Coachella. ATs went from filming in the actual Sahara Desert for their debut to making history on Coachella Sahara stage. One of my favorite comments I saw was all that luggage, yet apparently no shirts made the trip. The Rose also performed. We had a surprise stage from got 7s Jackson and BB, and La Seraphim not only bringing out Nile Rodgers, but even unveiled a new song. However, that didn't seem to be the topic regarding La Seraphim that dominated the headlines or even the national news on TV. The conversation seemed to be revolving around their quote, inadequate live vocal performance that night. I'm sure you've seen the TikToks to MR Removed videos, comparisons to other K-pop groups that have performed at the festival, even Coachella's own post about La Seraphim saw a bunch of disapproving comments thrown toward the girls. Sakura then puts out a post reflecting on their Coachella appearance, but also seemingly addressing the current criticisms. She talked about what it meant to perform on such a prestigious stage, how much they learned in preparation, and the fun and memorable experiences she wanted people to come away with. She said they stood proudly, enjoyed themselves, and gave it their all. She mentions that no one is perfect, but of all the stages they've shown, this was the best, and she's excited to work even harder. She then touches on comparing yourself to others and how important it is to focus on the good. She ended it by thanking everyone that was with them and watched them. Well, this apparently did not go over well with a lot of people, now criticizing her for that mindset, describing her positive outlook or quote, rationalization, as such a Japanese mindset. This is when Chewan took to her Instagram and posted a clip of Doja Cat sticking up her middle finger. While many people interpreted this as an obvious response to the people bashing La Seraphim, it's important to note that we can't know that for sure. Another group under Hybe and Hypen were dealing with their own criticisms this week. Sungun and Jake were seen attending an event for Tiffany & Co, where they took a picture with someone, later identified as a famous adult hostess and cabaret club owner. Apparently, a lot of Japanese fans expressed their discomfort, seeing the guys taking a photo with a quote, sex worker. The uproar actually got to the point where Hybe had to put out a statement, explaining at these brand events, idols are asked to take photos with several attendees, and oftentimes, they aren't able to identify the people asking for photos. They reiterated that the picture was taken at the request of the attendee. Stray Kids also attended an event in Japan recently, holding a fan sign with a brand they collaborate with. However, after the members left, this company reportedly brought out items to auction that Stray Kids had used or worn while filming the brand's promotional material. Not just things like phone cases, but jackets, sweaters, tank tops, which people who were there described as still having the scent of their perfume. Obviously, this garnered a lot of backlash for violation of privacy and betrayal of trust, accusing the company of knowing what they were doing was wrong because they waited for the members and JYP staff to leave before doing this. On top of that, this didn't seem to be for charity, rather trying to profit off of these used clothes. The company had no choice but to apologize to everyone involved for the quote, unfortunate incident that had occurred. They explained they did not have consent from JYP, but instead of keeping the garments, thought it would be a nice surprise event for fans who would find them more meaningful. They would try to rectify the situation by getting back the things that were sold and return any money that was made. Let's go back to Hype for a bit, Adore more specifically, because this new jean situation was actually reported by the New York Times. New jeans and their company are seeking help from a California federal court for a defamation lawsuit. New jeans attorney is requesting Google to reveal the identity of an anonymous YouTuber who has been making malicious videos about the girls that garner millions of views. In response to this, the YouTuber in question uploaded a seemingly sarcastic video saying they woke up to the news of being sued, but it's a good thing they didn't apply for YouTube monetization. Though they do admit they're scared and nervous as any human would, would be, but then pinned a comment that said, so scared. This mock apology would eventually be deleted, along with the entire channel, as it has now seemingly been removed for violating community guidelines. For the last part of this more serious section, as usual, we have health updates or idols we won't be seeing for a while. A very scary event took place as I Chillin recently attended a baseball game to perform, also throwing the first pitch and taking the ceremonial first bat. However, during the third inning of the game, Cho Won was reportedly struck by a foul ball to the back of the head. She was immediately taken to the medical room where she was said to have fainted. Cho Won was transported to the hospital nearby for a more thorough diagnosis. 
luckily she did regain consciousness, obviously expressed the pain she was in, but is now resting and getting proper treatment. KM Entertainment informed fans, Cho Wan will be taking a hiatus from all activities, while I Chillin will continue their schedules as 6. And finally, someone else we won't be seeing for a while is NCT's Taeyong who officially enlisted this week. We got to see him post photos of his new haircut, along with being sent off by the members. However, Mark and Hechan was supposed to take the earliest flight from Shanghai to Busan to send him off as well, but were delayed due to the rain. As you can see, they were very upset by the circumstances, but still tried to lift everyone's spirits by sending off Taeyang via live stream at the airport. And in the vein of lifting spirits, let's get into the positive things in K-pop that we can celebrate this week. This actually should have been in last week's video. Congrats to Blackpink's Lisa, seen on billboards across the world lately, whose own label announced she has signed with huge US label RCA Records, which will not only support, back, and help manage her solo work, but maybe more importantly, the deal allows her to own and retain control of it. Also happy for Lovely's Miju and soccer player Sambamgun, as they've just been confirmed to be dating. For my longtime K-pop fans out there, it's so good to see Fiesta recently reunite together again, holding a live stream and singing their old songs. From reuniting to just uniting, after several subunit debuts, Triple S have now officially unveiled all 24 members together and will now be preparing for their upcoming album, Assemble 24. While we wait for that, congrats to the music show winners this week. Idol's B-side Fate has now achieved a triple crown on Inkigayo, on and off took home their second ever career win on the show, and Islet earned number one on Music Core, Show Champion, M Countdown, and Music Bank. Another congratulations to Owlet, as they have now become the first K-pop group to enter the Billboard Hot 100 with a debut song. Not only that, but they are also now the fastest group to enter the Hot 100, breaking 5050's record. TXT is also setting records with their number 3 debut on the Billboard 200. This week's Korean comebacks and releases included Boy Next Door, One Wee, the debuts of Unicode, described as an all-Japanese K-pop girl group, the debut of B-Wave, Rise's prologue single, EXO Lay released a new song, of course Lucembol is back with Girls' Night, A-Pink put out a song for their 13th anniversary, and finally Astro's Jinjin released a special duet with Moon Bin one year after his passing as a gift to those who miss him. Once again, there's not a better place or clip to end this video. Definitely add anything I didn't get to mention from this week in K-pop to the pinned comment. I'll see you next Friday.